All right, Greg Lawner here for ESPN Chattanooga, ESPNChattanooga.com and the ESPN Chattanooga mobile app. We're hanging out here at AT&T Field and we're hanging out with Lookouts player Blake Dunn. Blake, thanks for being here. Appreciate uh, you coming on with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so you grew up in Holland, Michigan, small town in Michigan. It was only an hour from Kalamazoo where you actually played college baseball. Ever happened to run into Derek Jeter or meet Derek Jeter? Unfortunately not, nope. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of stories about him, and, and obviously being only an hour from Kalamazoo, he was probably pretty big in that area. Yeah, I mean, um, I think I don't, I don't totally know like the whole background about it, and I don't want to get anything wrong, but I think he went to high school in he, Kalamazoo. He did, Kalamazoo High, yep. Um, but I'm, I think he was act, he, I don't think he was born in Kalamazoo. I think he was born somewhere else and then grew up in Kalamazoo. Um, but yeah, I mean, you heard it all, all the time. Like, I remember I think when I committed to Western in like the Kalamazoo area, people around my hometown were like, oh, so you're going to play where Derek Jeter went to school. And I was like, no, Derek Jeter didn't go to Western Michigan, but he's no. from the area. <laughs> so how was growing up and playing baseball in Michigan? We talked a little off the air about how we're both kind of from the north where it's a little bit colder. So what was it like playing baseball and growing up in Michigan? Yeah, I mean, uh, kind of like we talked about, I mean, you, you start the season off in early March and a little bit of February um, and you're out in the cold playing and whatever you can get get on the field in so I mean it might have snowed earlier in the morning or some sleet a little bit but if the field's dry by three four o'clock in high school like you're going out there to play the game and you just got to deal with the cold hands and a lot of hand warmers a lot of heaters in the dugout and then it was the same deal in college I uh, went to Western Michigan played there for four years and that beginning of the season obviously we in college we uh, we had the ability to travel down south for a little bit at the beginning of the season. Um, but even when we come back for that start of the uh, conference season, it's still late March and early April, which is a toss up in Michigan. You never know what you're going to get. It might be 70 and sunny one day and then the next day it's 45 with 25 mile an hour winds. And so you just kind of roll with it, whatever, whatever you're, uh, you walk out of the house, you check the weather and you might need a long sleeve that day when you go to the field or, or you're in a short sleeve. So. It's just kind of uh, taking whatever you can get and just playing on the field, being happy to, to be able to play the game. So how does it compare to Chattanooga? Are you more of a colder weather person or do you like the 90 plus degree heat that we've been experiencing here lately? I mean, I love the heat because I've been playing in cold for so long. But I mean, this weather is actually pretty similar to where I grew up in um, like the Saugatuck Holland area that I was born like was right on Lake Michigan. So I'm used to the humidity and like kind of that little aspect of the heat. But um, I would say the only, the, the toughest like environment that I've played in um, is definitely like that 110, 115 degree heat in Arizona. I mean, I would definitely, if we're, if we're picking options, like I would take this over, over like the cold at home, but I would uh, I would take the cold over the 120 <laughs> degree heat in Arizona for sure. <laughs> All right, so what do you like most about being here in Chattanooga and just kind of living in Chattanooga right now? Uh, I think the the nature, like the scenery, like you drive around. Uh, I'm not like super big into going out and like being in in the nature and stuff, but when you drive around, everything's super pretty. Um, the downtown area is really nice. The, the fans that come to the game are super supportive. So just the whole aspect of just the city and, and the, the scenery, the wildlife, all that stuff around here is really nice. All right, so you grew up in a small town in Michigan, Holland as it was, small D1 college baseball at Western Michigan. You were drafted 451st or 50th overall, and now you're a top 30 prospect here with the Reds. Did, have you always sort of played with a chip on your shoulder? Have you always sort of felt like the underdog? Yeah, I mean, that that's, I mean, something my dad uh, kind of instilled in me at a young age was just kind of always going out there, um, play hard, play aggressive, be yourself, and um, don't always forget that, like, you just have that little chip on your shoulder. Nothing, nothing, he always, like, made sure that I knew it was nothing in a negative uh, aspect of, like, I mean, sometimes you hear guys play with a chip on his shoulder and you might think they're a dirty player, but it has nothing to do with that. It's more just going out there, having a chip on your shoulder, believing in yourself, believing in your abilities, believing in the people that believe in you. Um, that's one thing that I like to look at is um, not necessarily having a chip on my shoulder and proving people wrong, but more so having a chip on my shoulder and proving people right that believe in me. 
um, kind of like proving yourself right that yeah. like you believe in yourself so you're proving yourself right you're proving it to yourself hey I can do this every step of the way yeah exactly I mean just like the Reds chose pick me in the 15th round and it has nothing to do with necessarily the other 14 rounds that people didn't pick me but it's more so proving the Reds right in that they they took the right person in the 15th round and that was me so just trying to go out there and play hard and be myself and play the game the right way well, one of your biggest aspects of your game is your ability to steal bases. And uh, so I want to just ask you, what is your strategy when it comes to stealing bases? Do you have a specific strategy? Is it something that you've cultivated and worked on as you've gotten into professional baseball? A little bit. I mean, I've always been fast and like had the ability to steal bases and be aggressive. That's always kind of been my, my thing. And um, I try to just read the pitcher as best I can from the dugout. I mean, sometimes it's hard being the leadoff batter. Like, you kind of just have to be out there in that first time, try to get as best a jump as I can, and um, try to watch any video or any type of stuff before the game that can help give me an advantage. So that first time I get on base, I'm not having to wait for a pickoff move over to see what his pickoff move is like. Um, try to figure out all that stuff beforehand. Um, but I mean, ultimately, when when it comes down to it, I just try to let my instincts take o take over. And um, when I feel like I can get a good jump and I feel like I can take another 90 feet and steal a base, I just go for it. All right. Finally, um, last one. If you had to, if you were talking to a group of kids right now, baseball players, younger baseball players, what advice would you give them? I would tell them to have fun. I would tell them to continue to work hard. Um, you might be the best baseball player in your town at your age level, but it, this isn't just a USA game. I mean, this is an entire world, globally, all over the world, all over the world game. And um, it's just, uh, there's a lot of people that you have to compete with. And not that that's a scary thing, but it's just something to always like kind of, at least for me, like growing up, like if I were to look back, like I would have liked to known that there is no end end spot where you feel like you're actually in a good position like you have to always keep working you have to always keep trying to make yourself one percent better that's something that our coaches talk about a lot um, and, and it's never going to be one day like the next day you wake up and all of a sudden you feel like you're on top of the world like it's a process and um, if you can do something like for me today like if I do something today that made me a better baseball player than I was yesterday then today was a success so it's just little things like that little steps nothing nothing too crazy because the game's hard and in baseball you're going to deal with a lot of failure so you just got to try to find those successes as best you can. Blake Dunn ladies and gentlemen Chattanooga Lookouts outfielder see him out here stealing bases shagging down fly balls and hopefully getting on base a whole lot. Blake thanks so much for your time. Thank you.